Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Kathy Chat. Um, with me today is the Managing Director of the Ottawa Office for Canada's largest full-service law firm, Borden Ladner Gervais, Catherine Cooligan, who is a dear friend of mine, who I know has been juggling like a circus act over the last little while. Uh, Catherine, what I've been asking people in this series of Kathy Chats is, what was happening in your world when the world pressed pause last month? Well, I was in the process of packing up my home that I had lived in for 33 years. And as I tell everyone, you could tell I had been there for 33 years because I had almost everything over those 33 years. So I remember very well packing everything up and, you know, hearing what was happening. And then, of course, you know, at, as management at the firm, then we had to jump into action very quickly to start planning and mobilizing to get our staff working from home. So it was a very busy time trying to juggle, you know, ensuring that our staff was safe and still productive and also try and move a house. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. But you're in the new home. Yes, we are. So it happened. It happened. We're here. It was uh, quite an ordeal. One we won't forget soon, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure many people are taking inventory of 2020 so far, you know, and there have been a lot of interesting words used to describe the experience, but some people thought 2019 was a bad year for them. And now in review, they're thinking, hey, it might not have been such a bad deal after all. Um, so in your business, which is a people business, you know, we have to still go on with certain aspects of life. And in your business, in your particular area of law, which is family law, I mean, things still moving? What's happening? What's happening with the courts? How do you manage your stuff? Things are still moving. I mean, our team is uh, set up to work remotely. Um, everybody's been absolutely fantastic, as one would expect. I mean, this is a situation none of us ever expected to be in, certainly did, could never have planned for. So clients and, and counsel have been very supportive and flexible, cooperative. The courts were only open for uh, emergency hearings. And so, and we, we did have them. We've had a few emergency hearings where, you know, in custody cases, parents are questioning what should happen with the children in terms of access, blended families, in a situation such as social distancing, the, the pandemic has really changed the way we live. So questions such as, you know, when the kids aren't in school, we have 50-50. Well, the kids aren't in school, so do we have 50-50? So we were actually very busy, we still are. Um, the courts are starting to open up as of next week. They'll be opening up for non-emergency hearings, um, but the system is still not ready to have the, the same capacity of court hearings that we had before. Um, certainly, you know, in terms of being able to service our clients, now most people are, are into the the day-to-day -day of things and we can continue to work and move our files forward. It's only those cases that are dependent on court hearings that have slowed down a little bit, but I think that that's going to be opening up and certainly what, what, has, what this has, accelerated is our ability to work remotely and I think we're going to see when this all ends that there'll be a lot more flexibility in that regard which will be a good thing for a lot of clients. That was my next question. What are you learning about this? We'll call it an opportunity, really an experiment to see how that idea works because you know we have a business networking group my husband and I are together in this business networking group and we asked our group on a zoom call yesterday would they like to continue with zoom or would they prefer to you know meet in person and you know many of them drive a long way to come to our meeting and the consensus was well we could maybe do every second meeting on zoom but we really like that idea of you know the in person contact so you know it's something about teams right where, where we have groups of people who rely on one another and leadership and so on you know what's that what's the result of that experiment i guess we don't know exactly yet but but really an opportunity to examine that yeah i think that's the case for sure i mean certainly all of us now know when we can't be together how valuable the in person contact is and we're all craving it and missing it but there's so much that we can do without that. 
it's so much more efficient. I mean, our office is downtown. So for people to drive downtown, park, come in for a meeting that might only be half an hour or an hour, think of the time that we could save if we do it like this. I mean, even in terms of filing documents at court, I mean, we are still sending process servers to the court to stand in line and take a number and file documents in court. Why are we doing that today? And now I think we're going to see that we'll, we'll take advantage of what we've learned. And really, as I say, it's accelerated, I think, where we were going anyway. Mm -hmm. And having had the success of now everybody learning it and getting used to it, I think that we will be doing it a lot more. Yeah. As a, as a managing director, you know, you're in charge of a lot of people and you have to work from home for the most part, too. So how is that for you as a leader? So as a, the firm has been incredibly active in engagement. So we send out daily emails. We're exchanging pictures. We have fun themes every day. Um, we're in the office. The managers rotate and we're in the office, each of us one day a week. We have essential staff on on duty in the office and you know it's really important that we are there with them as well and making sure that they see us and that we're there to support them i mean i i have to tell you like i am so impressed with all of our teams you know people have really rallied and made the best of what they can from this and i feel incredibly supported by our staff you know i'm trying to support them but i feel supported so when i send out my daily emails you know, we get, you know, I get so many back saying, oh, I love these. I love the pictures. You know, we share recipes. We do a whole bunch of different things. Um, we're doing a lot of Zoom um, parties, gatherings, and, you know, we share those. So it's, you know, I really feel that we are able to connect with one another. And I think that's the most important thing is that we're still reaching out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I take a few people a day and send emails and say, how are you doing? And it's been great because it's a way for me to connect with them and hear their stories. And I was talking to somebody yesterday who said, like, I can't believe it. Like my husband's still working. My, my three kids all have jobs. Like I really can't complain. And then there are other people that you talk to. And, you know, some people are saying like, we're just so sick of one another, but all of it, you know, is just about connecting and supporting one another and laughing. You know, I find that we're laughing so much. We're laughing at ourselves on zoom a lot. <laughs> Well, if you think about the amount of time we're actually saving or creating in our lives, you know, I always say in my workshops that everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. It's what we do with that time that really creates a different, a different result from, you know, the life we had before was so full on. I mean, everybody was going full steam ahead at everything. And I think we just came up against uh, a bit of a rubber wall and bounced back. And now we've had an opportunity to look at how do we do what we do and how well are we able to connect? The fact that you're able to reach out in this way and create that teamwork, you know, that team spirit really is, is very impressive. And I think people can learn a lot from, from that type of thing where you're focusing on what's good and what's positive, keeping people's spirits up as we navigate because we don't know the actual end date. Nobody really knows the end date of all of this or what it's gonna look like on the other side. So, you know, it teaches us how resilient we are and how well we're able to pivot, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the case. And, you know, you realize the things that you, as you say, you know, what we wasted time on. And hopefully, you know, we, we'll all be so much more, I mean, I use the word efficient, but that's not really the word. Just you know, really uh, more purposeful, I guess, in, in the time that we do spend and what we do and how we do it. Yeah, intention is everything. It's what, what makes you get up in the morning and go about your day. I think that's the, for me, that's been the invitation to many people of this time is look at what you're doing with your life and see if that really works for you. And if it does, are you giving it what it deserves? And I think, you know, what you're seeing is people who do have that clear intention rise and they rise to it and they shine bright during it so I think that's wonderful and also they shine so other people can see what it looks like you know so they feel inspired yes now on a yeah I think it's so I, I want to say this Kathy because you know there's so many people who <clears throat> excuse me who really count on things like what you're doing you know like your you know, your, you know, when your Kathy talks and all of the different videos and messages that you send, because, 
you know, they're like, we all have different things. There are some people who are alone in an apartment. There are the elderly, like my mother, who, you know, is your biggest fan, as you know. Um, and, you know, she counts on that. And there's so many people who don't have the ability and the contact. And seeing you, um, hearing your message, just the, the you know, the, the, the positive spirit that you share, it makes such a difference. And you don't have to be doing this. And that's one of the things that I find is that those people who are out doing it, it's so appreciated. I hope you know that because I, I, I know how valuable it is. I listen in as much as I can because I, it just, it, it's an important part of the day. And it's, it's important to appreciate what people are making the effort to do to make other people's lives better. So thank you. Well, and thank you for acknowledging it. It is you know, it is a calling, as I've said to you before, it's something I feel called to do. Just put it out there. Just put it out there, Kathy. And I'm really not, I'm never really 100% sure what I'm going to do, but I just do it. And in the end, you know, if it helps one person, that's my job done. So I feel very honored to have the work I do today and to be able to share. I was going to bring up your mom because <laughs> your mother, well, you're one of my favorite people, you know that, but your mom is right at the top of the list too. Your mom, Dorothy, is somebody very, very special. I always have such a great time talking to her on the phone. She makes me laugh. And I said to her recently when we were talking, I remember your mom was in the hospital. Let, let's talk about that for a second, because, you know, she had gone through, and you with her, such a challenging time where you almost lost her. And then... Yeah she came back. So talk a little about that. And that that's a challenging thing for you too, because you can't be with her right now. Yeah, that was so hard. I mean, it was, you know, I, I picked her up to take her to the doctor and she ended up in the hospital and in surgery within three hours. And they told us had we waited an extra hour, she would have been gone. Her whole system was infected. She had sepsis. And so, I mean, it was such a hard time because, you know, we had lost my dad last February and you know you know how you talk about you know so many people said 2019 was bad and 2020 was going to be it and you know boy let me tell you 2020 really has knocked us on our butts as much as 2019 did but you know there's always something that you can be thankful for and it was such a hard time and it was she went through so much um but you know she got out on friday the 13th and everything went into lockdown the next week and I think about, you know, how lucky the timing of that was. You know, we were laughing and saying, oh, my gosh, like Friday the 13th, you know, not a good day for something to be happening. Perfect day for something to be happening. Mm -hmm. Now she's home. And I mean, the hard part was that then I was into the very busy moving phase. And now we can't see her. So it's, it's hard. I mean, we get her on FaceTime and, you know, when she'll answer and when she can get the camera at the right angle. But um you know, we're so blessed, but it's, it is hard. And it's, it's, you know, it's so funny how we each have our own struggle with it. You know, I was moving through it. I had management issues, more increased management duties at the time. Other people are bored. And I'm, I'm thinking about the people who are bored. And I think, wow, like, I could give you something to do. But the important thing is that everybody is struggling in different ways. And I think that is what we all have to acknowledge and recognize. And for my mom, you know, she's there all alone. She's used to us being there. And, you know, so it's been hard that way. But she, she's good. I mean, like, she'll she'll do FaceTime and she watches you on, on Facebook. And so she's doing good. But we're just so glad that she got out before the lockdown. I mean, what she went through was absolutely unbelievable and to see how she's pivoted back at 94 she'll be 89 89 89, 89 years yeah. old i mean yeah, she'll tell you she feels 94 <laughs> <laughs> depending on the day i think we all yes. feel about 94 <laughs> yes depending on the day but you know to your point Catherine, i think everybody is working through this situation this isolation this disconnection in some measure in their own way with their own unique challenges. And again, it comes back to that idea that we're being asked to do some inventory on how are we doing, you know, what's working for us, what's not, how can we on the other side of this enjoy our lives? Because, you know, life is gonna go on. We wanna make sure that the life we're shaping today is the one we want on the other side of this. So, yeah. you know, so so on, on many levels, I'm, I'm really happy for you because you have moved into your new home, which is making you really happy. 
you know, you've crossed the chasm with your mom, <laughs> things are on the other side of it. And it looks like your team at BLG is, is thriving. And that's also, you know, got to feel good. Sometimes we have to step back from all that to just acknowledge, wait a minute, this is really going very well, when sometimes it's really hard. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, and we, you know, you, we, we often will say it's through our darkest times that we realize how, you know, how appreciative we are for the things that we have. And I think that that's going to do, you know, I think that what we're going through now, we're going to appreciate one another more. We're going to appreciate our ability to get together more. We're going to appreciate our ability to work remotely. And, you know, I think it will change lives. And it's, you know, you can take the best of it and go with it and, you know, and be proud of the struggles that you overcame because there, there definitely are struggles through it. Yeah. And I think what we're finding is just how resilient we are. That's the thing I, I'm celebrating about all the folks I've been talking to since I started the Kathy Chats is every person has some story of resilience, how they made it through. So if we can do this, you know, really, we can do anything. And that is the truth of it all, to rely on the resilience that we build over the experience of life, because we sort of have to have that experience to feel resilient. Um, but really, it is something I think for cel cel worth celebrating. And, you know, I think also to your point, I think we've gotten very simple and basic with our values. You know, we appreciate family, we appreciate community, we appreciate the things that really do spark us as people instead of looking to retail shopping or other things that, that we did maybe before. Uh, which are not available to us right now. So it's it's an interesting time to be sure. Listen, I want to thank you for making time for us today and uh, wishing you and your team at BLG and of course your family and especially your sweet mom all the best. And I hope to see you on the other side of this, Catherine. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thanks for all you're doing. And I can't wait to see you in person. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Bye for now.